Hello, welcome. Today, this is five hacks for um, being all in on your parenting and also on your personal goals. I feel like when we talk about life getting in the way of goals, um, becoming a mother is the epitome of facing that, being used to being an achiever, and then all of a sudden you're just thrown into this roller coaster and you're no longer in that rhythm you're used to. So my goal today is to talk about some simple ways that you can shift the way that you're approaching, um, accomplishing, so that you'll actually get more done and feel better in your role in your family. Now, if you are not a mother, um, maybe you're a father in the same situation, or maybe you're not facing a parenting situation, I'm sure that you can still um, find and apply these principles to your situation as well. I'm just focusing here on mothering for the sake of clarity and being specific in my examples. So first I wanna say thank you, Sarah Meyer, for throwing this New Year's party. I'm so excited about this. I'm excited to be here. There's a lot of great material we've got going on. And as a little introduction to myself, I'm Heather Manwaring. I'm from New York originally, not the city. I'm from a small town. So if anyone is watching from northern New York, hello, <laughs> and even the city, um, we're still connected by New York. And I'm over here in Utah right now. I came out here for school. So in high school, I was always just big on achieving. I did a lot of things independently because we didn't have um, the normal courses available. It was a small school. So I took things independently. I took the AP physics test, studied for that independently, got a four, and that was just thanks to having a really good study guide. But my point is that I was able to focus. I was able to have my goal. I worked toward it. I accomplished and um, valedictorian there, presidential scholarship at college. And so I kind of was used to this ability to have a list, focus in, get it done, see results. And I'm guessing a lot of you guys are similar, being used to being big achievers and whatever your method is, um, now it's kind of getting thrown off. So I definitely saw that change when I became a mother, I went through just this whole transition where I realized all of a sudden I couldn't just hop in the car and go to the store and get that done. I I didn't have the freedom, it felt like, to operate under my normal checklist, schedule it out, schedule every half hour, um, get it done method. And so I made some adjustments and Honestly, this is the best life. I love it. It's so fun. And so uh, my oldest, oldest, um, I'm not, I'm still new to this, but my oldest is two and a half and I have a little baby as well. So in the last two years, um, sorry, I'm looking down at my little scribbles over here. So in the last two years, some things that I've dived into are some, you know, aerial silks for myself some deep healing, making time for that, but also some major accomplishments in the area of gardening outside. We have a huge garden. Not everyone would find it huge, but most people would find it pretty big. And I've done a lot of just involved natural things around the house, um, do some cloth diapering, some EC. But then on top of that, all those different projects, I was able to get an Airbnb started and going our basement apartment and so I've basically been running that because my husband works full-time and I was able to um, oversee and help with getting our whole yard re just landscaped we redid the whole thing for a rebate program here in Utah for saving water and so that was kind of my baby as well um, getting the the deadlines taken care of and then we've also been working on remodeling. We've remodeled a lot of our house and fit that into chapters. So those are some things that we've done just in the last two and a half years, um, setting goals and then accomplishing them. So I want to talk about how to do that and still feel just a wholeness with, with your family. I think it's so important that we have a shift in what accomplishment looks like. So before I go into my big five, 
I want to just give a little overview of what this looks like in my life and some important things to keep in mind. And I don't know about you, usually when I'm watching these, I'm just putting it on and washing dishes or driving at the same time. So just, you know, be listening and feel free to take notes, grab the freebie consultation at the end and send me an email if you want the PDF with all of this written out, the easy notes, um, and just any questions that you have. I would love to chat about them in our little meeting. So yesterday, <laughs> as an example of what it looks like, the mom life here. I have a project I'm working on. One of my new goals is I'm starting a birth dance class. I'm very excited about this. Very, very um, feeling led to do this project to help other women. And so my steps yesterday were to call two birth centers. I did that kind of in between naps while baby carrying um, and sent off an email and then my toddler was up, we spent time reading together, I went and visited a, a neighbor that I had an appointment with for you know a little service opportunity, we read books, um, the basics, diapers, bathroom, takes three times as long or more when you have children to take care of because you're going through each one and it's a slower process. We made dinner, we folded about half the laundry and today I got most of the rest of it finished. We're almost there. Spent time with my husband and then prepared for, for this video. So there's a lot going on and there's a lot going on in your life. So before we go into our big five, I want to take a breath, take a step back and recognize that you're not going to do it all, at least not at the same time. If you're washing dishes, you're not painting your house. If you are making important phone calls, well, you can, you might be able to multitask that a little bit, but um, you're not, you're, you're always making choices. And so when we talk about this accomplishing, we're gonna have to be really honed in to what we want to get done and let go of everything else for a minute. And we'll talk about that. Um, but I want you to also kick out the little voice in your head that's telling you what you should be doing. I think as a mom, and again, if you're not a mom, apply this to your own situation, but we have a lot of voices saying what it should look like, what your house should look like, what your kids should look like, what your methods should look like. All of that is getting in the way of being able to have just an authentic method that feels good for accomplishing. It's the wrong energy to accomplish from. It just makes you frustrated, irritated, and, and drains your energy, which keeps you from being able to be um, your most effective self. So kick out the voice of shoulds. If you find yourself saying it should be this way, kick it out. Just let it go. I give you permission. <sighs> Pick your priorities. That is going to be key to feeling good about your accomplishments. Make sure you know what matters. Do your kids matter? Does your partner matter? Your spouse? Um, are there certain things that you feel really need to be in your life? Make sure that those get the place that they need and then we're gonna fit these accomplishments around them. And I promise you it will work. I promise we'll go into this. Um, you will be able to feel good, feel fulfilled in your own journey while making those things priority and keeping them in their place. So again, with those shoulds, if you have this voice that says, I should, I need to, I need to, you know, kind of cut my family short a little bit to get this important thing done, like, we're gonna rethink this. We're gonna get rid of those shoulds and we're gonna, we're gonna make it work together. So the last thing before my big five is redefine accomplishment. So again, I went through this transition becoming a mother where I was used to having this list, I checked it off and I felt accomplished, I felt good. I had something, a goal I was working towards and a lot of it was um, kind of rated by outside sources, you know, the grade at school or the job, um, 
because I was working, I actually worked as a flavor, um, well, at a flavor company in quality assurance um, before before having my first baby. And that was a lot of fun, but it was all outward external sources. So we want to think about just redefining um, what that looks like and and then pause before we get into how to accomplish what you want to accomplish, just pause and know that you're doing good. That needs to come before before anything else is just pause and know that that you're you're doing great. You're doing enough in this moment. And if that doesn't feel like a lot, I want you to pause and start writing down the things that you've already done today. And take note of that. And you'll you'll begin to see how many things you're already accomplishing. So please take note of that. If you want reminders of all these things, just email me um, for the PDF. It's manwearinghs at gmail.com. Manwearinghs, and I'll say that again at the end as well. Okay, so now let's talk about our, our five hacks. And this is the kind of lead one to another. And this is going to help you just shift. I want to do a shift. In, in how we approach this accomplishing as a mom. So first, pick a few goals. You've probably heard this before, but this is number one. You need to pick certain goals to focus on. So if you have a list of 10 things that you want to do that are big projects, write them out and then pick three or two or one and let that be your main focus. And then you can section it out throughout the year. So right now I have some goals in mind. I'm working on my birth dance class. That is a big focus for these next few months. Summertime, we're gonna shift gears a little bit and I'll be working more on the outdoor projects. And then I have some other things that are gonna come online later in the year. I feel more peaceful knowing that it's gonna come in later on down the road. I don't have to worry about it all right now. And then I'm able to just hone in. So pick your your first goals and recognize that there are seasons and chapters in life and that this season right now is just meant for these certain things. And then you're gonna zero in on that goal and you're gonna focus and you're gonna give yourself time to work on it where you're not thinking about anything else. As a mom, we have a lot of things that are pulling at our attention just from the things that we need to do. And then there's the extra things, social media, phone notifications. I highly advise just turning off a lot of the notifications other than whatever is most urgent. That way you can pick a specific time. That's actually a little bonus tip is picking a specific time to do those errands like going through your texts, going through your emails. That way, the rest of the time, you're not being pulled away from what you really want to get done. So by focus, I mean that if you decided that you want to get a room painted in your house, I'm giving examples from recent things that we're working on, then you need to be able to focus in on that and let some of the other errands in the house just sit and wait. You'll get to them. You'll get to all of them, but they're going to sit and wait for a minute. You're gonna focus in on your important goal. So number two, pick a themed theme for each day for, for the goals that are important to you. And this is one that has helped me as I've tried to figure out how to keep accomplishing when there's not a lot of time to accomplish them. So I started doing this with my first when she was a baby most of the day is spent on, on just the, the basics. You're doing laundry, you're doing dishes, you're taking care of a baby. And so you just get these little moments of time or maybe you have a regular time. Like for, for me, it was when she napped. And so in order to use that time fully, I needed to already know what I was gonna do during that time. And I didn't always make the time to sit down and plan ahead. I highly recommend planning your week ahead of time but I didn't always get to that. And so I just had a theme for each day. And so I knew as soon as she went down for a nap, I was on it. 
and that really helped me to actually accomplish more than I did before I had kids because before I had kids I knew I had time and so I didn't I wasn't as intentional about that and so I would get caught up in the little errands um, but with her then I recognized hey if I want this to happen I have to use this time so it became sacred time and it became a time where I allowed myself to sit down um, sit down and do those so some things that were important to me were uh, um, doing some research for you know for health or for healing taking some time to meditate taking some time to write a novel um, what are some other things that I've worked on during her nap times taking time for personal history um, taking times again for for sharing courses with others um, the list goes on, but I, I have a lot of things that I was able to just have that sacred time where I would sit down and focus in. Now with my second baby, the routine has shifted and we usually get about 30 minutes maybe of overlapping sleeping time. So we're going to see how, um, how it looks today if I need to pause this for a minute or not, but, um, the shifts still allows me to have, because I have a theme for the day, I'm still able to recognize those opportunities that come. I see, oh, my little one is occupied and my baby is playing, or my little one is napping and my baby is, is um, you know, being independent right now. And then I'm able to jump into that theme and I don't have to think much about it. And it also allows me to, um, give myself permission to work on those things. When we want to accomplish big, we're looking outside of our normal day-to-day -day chores. And so if we're trying to make sure that the house is constantly squeaky clean, for example, then we can easily spend every spare moment wiping up every spill that comes. By ch picking a theme of the day, you're going to take at least 15 minutes to just pause. You'll get to it later, but just pause the housework. Work on that goal and then go back to everything else. And as you do that over time, it's gonna accumulate and you'll realize that you're actually accomplishing big on your goals and you're moving forward and it's feeling good just by allowing yourself to pause and take time. So that's my, my second tip. Have a theme of your day so that you know that you're looking for a chance to squeeze in even 15 minutes of this project that's important to you, whatever that is. Um, so number three goes along with what we just talked about. So once you have your theme of the day, you need a way to fit it in. And one of the big tips that you'll hear um, for accomplishing work is the time block and that's I tried that for a little while and it was good when <laughs> when I had more flexibility to make my own schedule um, it's a great thing to do where you have a set period of time you make yourself a schedule you commit to yourself and you say at this time I will work on this I will get it done and it pushes you pushes you to do that. But with kids, what I've found, and I've heard another mother sharing this recently as well, is that it can add tension when you set yourself a goal. Okay, for the next hour, I am going to deep clean the bathroom. And then over the next hour, you suddenly are getting pulled away to give snacks or pick someone up or to help someone that fell down you're helping your kids and then all of a sudden it's time to make lunch and the bathroom's not clean it's very discouraging so the time block doesn't always help us to feel good in the just organicness of how life is with kids so instead of the time block i chunk up my routine um just, just by that, by, by kind of the main things that are happening throughout the day. And instead of looking at the clock and saying, this is the exact amount of time I need to do this, I'm fitting into the routine, the different activities that I need to do. Um, so I'm getting looking at my little scribbles here. 
So for example, for us, I have two, two little ones. And so I, in those first few months after giving birth, I kind of just let myself get a feel for what that looked like, the new routine with the new baby. And so right now it looks something like we get up and you know we do breakfast. I do my stretching because I need to stretch and then um, I exercise and then I'm letting the kids play for a little bit and then the baby's ready to be carried and so I, I put her in a baby carrier and then you know they nap at different times and then in the afternoon my toddler is starting to get stir crazy and then it's time to make dinner so we have this overall pattern routine that does not go at the same time every day um, but we have sections and chunks and so what I do is instead of writing out an exact schedule I write out just the general pattern with a lot of leeway for things to come into play and then I just pick some of those things I know I need to get done and some of those goals and I stick them in where appropriate and that has helped me to be more intentional. Um, you know, when I, when I look at my list of goals, look at the things I need to get done, look at my usual routine, it's a lot easier for me to, say, to see where it fits in. And I can see, oh, while I'm carrying the baby, because I do that every day, that will be the perfect time to, um, you know, organize this part of the house that I've been dying to get to. Or um, if I have, something I need to go to the library for. Then I can look at my general routine and say, oh, around two o'clock when my toddler is going stir crazy, that's the perfect time to go on a walk and I'll go to the library and get that done. So it just helps me to fit in those different things that are important and make it go with our day. Um, so that is our third three, is to categorize your tasks based around your routine and not just strict time blocks. Escape the stress of the clock. All right, so for number four, this is pretty, um, pretty much based on a cliche phrase, but it's the one that echoes in my head that helps me every day when I follow it. And it's just go with the flow, follow the flow of the day. And the reason I say that is because with kids, and everyone is, is different, right? Like some kids are like clockwork and they are just doing things at the exact same time every day. And if that's the case, that's, that's just fine. You know, kids have different temperaments. Um, but I find that there's just a certain organic movement to each day where, you know, sometimes my toddler gets up a little bit early and then she's sleepy and she goes to bed for her nap at 10 a.m. So other days she sleeps in and then she doesn't take her nap until noon. And so I have found that just by having a few tasks ready that I know can be done, I just try to follow what matches each moment. And the best way I can advise to do that is honestly just being prayerful. Um, about the day that that's my biggest guide is to just be trying to feel what matches for each moment and it helps things to just usually feel really good and just fit together as I have goals and then I allow it to just naturally fit in with our life you don't it doesn't feel good when your family and your other accomplishments that you're trying to do are like butting heads and when you are pushing against the, the needs of your family to get those accomplishments done. It, it just, it's irritating. It doesn't feel good. So follow the flow. Let, let the moments fit together, you know, where, okay, we sit down and we read a book together and then, and then now we go exercise and maybe that exercise is some dancing that we do together. And then maybe after that, my toddler is playing. And so I say, oh, perfect this is a perfect moment to do this other thing so for an example a few days ago right before christmas we were heading out on a trip we were preparing and i just had this whole list of goals like just probably way too many things i was trying to get done before we left i had a few gifts that i wanted to give to neighbors i was trying to let this christmas season mean a little bit more um 
just by way of thinking of others. And so I had some things to hand out I needed to pack. I had some foods to cook and get finished. Um, I had a couple bags of clothes that I needed to go through for my daughters. So there was a lot going on. And, and that day to me was the perfect example of just kind of following what felt like it was needed in each moment, again, being prayerful. And so in the morning, even though I had all these things to do, I paused and we started going through clothes. And it was perfect because there were a few things that we needed for our trip in those bags of clothes. And, and then I was about halfway through and I felt like, you know, I'm done with this. This just doesn't feel like what I need to do anymore. And I'm not going to push it. I'm going to move on to something else. And so I moved on to some other things with the packing and the cleaning. And then that evening we were able to get the gifts delivered. We did a little bit of caroling, which was really fun. We went to three houses with our toddler. It was cold, but it was really fun. It felt really good. And then we opened a few gifts early, right before bed. And my husband was proud of me for letting our toddler stay up because usually I'm big on her going to bed at the same time every day. But we followed what felt right for that day and it was a really beautiful Christmas experience on the day before we left um, to visit family for actual Christmas. And so that, that to me was the perfect example. Um, I've also had days where I didn't follow what felt right and, you know, would just get stuck in traffic and couldn't find what I needed at the store and then I'm too late for dinner and it just didn't feel good and 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 sometimes that just happens but but that's my my number four tip and if you would like to talk more about this um I would love to talk about that in our, our free consultation. Grab that and, and we'll take a look at your life and, and how does that look for your routine um, and any other questions that you have as well. So that is number four. Number five, I've touched on a little bit, but that is involve your kids. So again, we have our goals, we have our routine, and we're redefining what accomplishment looks like. We're finding ways to include our family life um, and, and doing it in a way that's benefiting all of us. I'm not talking about like just, you know, we have this thing on the computer and we're spending hours on that and so we're just keeping our toddler occupied next to us, like sometimes that might be what it looks like. But I'm talking about the things that we can involve them actively in that's really benefiting them and us at the same time. I had an epiphany um, after having my second baby. It was an adjustment for sure. And my main comfort was that a lot of most people go through this who have multiple kids. Um, it's an adjustment. Um, but, but I had this epiphany when I read something from the book, The Continuum Concept, and I'm not an expert on this, but she talked about just in traditional cultures where instead of a child-centered rearing, um, you actually just continue life as before and bring your children along with it. That's what they do in those traditional societies. They don't have an option. They have to go sell their goods at the market or they have to go out to do their washing like they just have to make it happen and so they just bring their kids along with them they bring their baby and wear their baby until their baby is walking and they just make it happen and then these kids see how it works and they're learning and and they're able to grow up responsibly so our routines are a little bit different here in western society our chores are different our, our day to day life is different, but sometimes I think the things that feel most impossible are actually things that we can involve our kids in. Um, my husband has asked me, oh, should we just hire someone to help clean the house? And I say no, because it's worth it to me to have that motivation to make it work and to include my children in it. So. That's my fifth tip, is to find ways to include your children. For me, I have certain things that are um, better suited, 
some things are not as well suited for including my children. So the more creative that I am with involving my kids um, with everything else, then the more I can use the downtime to to get done just those certain important projects. So, you know, involving her in the household cleaning, involving her in my exercise, involving her in, um, you know, sorting out or organizing, whatever it is, finding ways to include my children, have them around, and just make it work. I think that was a game changer for me um, with this go around, is that I can still get that stuff done. Um, and it is beneficial to all of us as a family. So that's my number five, is involve your kids. And going with that, um, a big help in accomplishing is just helping your kids feel like that cup is full for the day or for the hour. So my toddler, if I sit down with her first, that's that's part of our routine now is that when I get a moment in the morning when the baby is just playing or if the baby is still asleep, we sit down and we read a couple books together. That's what she needs to feel like I got time with mommy today. And then after we do that, then I'm able to go ahead and, and you know do the cleaning and I've been just working on having her involved with that too, which makes it even better. And then after her nap, we're likely to do that again, fill her cuff again. <laughs> um, so as you make that time for your kids um, and, and give them that full attention for a period of time, then they'll be, be able to be patient and work with you as you then transition to some other tasks. So this is a lot of general um, just principles and things that, that can be applied to a lot of different areas. My goal is to help you thrive help you thrive in in applying that it can be tricky with all the voices that are around us it can be tricky to figure out what our most important goal actually is um, sometimes when we want to feel accomplished and fulfilled the way we're going about it might not actually be the thing that's going to help bring us the most um, fulfillment and isn't that what we're looking for as we're trying to to accomplish on these big goals so again remembering my background um, I I was working when I had my baby my first baby I was still working my husband and I had alternate schedules and then I stopped working when he switched to a just full-time daytime um, job my my company wouldn't let me go remote it, even though it was the middle of COVID, I, yeah, anyway, they wouldn't let me go remote. And so I ended up just giving up the position so that I could be home with my baby. And, and there was this shift in what did it look like for me to have my time be valuable? Um, because in Western society, like that's what we're used to is like, we're bringing in money, we're bringing in income, we're, um, we're being rated by, by, um, just a lot of outward factors. And so I had to really stop and think what I wanted to do. Um, luckily for me, I have no problem staying busy, <laughs> um, finding a lot of projects to work on. And so feeling fulfilled at home was no problem. But I did feel that need to, I guess, be validated as well by, by contributing in a, in a monetary way. And so something I started doing was the printables. And I still have my shop up and I do have some goals um, for things that are relevant now to my, to my recent project that I want to put on there. But um, I've lost more money on Etsy fees than I've made on that little shop because after I started it, I actually just got this feeling that it wasn't what I needed to focus on. And so I let go of that and turned my focus to some of the other things. And that is what really changed just my trajectory completely. In the last two years, there's a lot that's happened. And I dived into a healing journey and I started learning and I started connecting, connecting with myself, connecting with my family. And, and the things that I learned helped me to develop a passion that now I have things that I'm sharing with other people. And that's my motivation. That's what I'm accomplishing. And that's what feels good. 
um, hence the birth dance class. Um, by the way, if you are interested in learning more about that, then you can absolutely find out more on our Facebook page, which is one of my new, my new endeavors. So we have a page, it's called Rising Woman, and that's my vision now. So I'm here to help you just embrace, embrace your reality, embrace your, your talents, embrace, um, just the innate value, the innate ability and, and learn to be aligned with that and learn to, to let go of those outward voices. I've done a lot of, um, just finding those sources that give greater validation to who we are as women, um, as mothers and so as you're working on your, your big goals and as you're seeking to accomplish, take the time to just really check in, who are you doing this for? Who have you set this goal for? Um, is it because of the little voices or big voices that outwardly tell you what you should be doing it? Or is it what feels aligned? Does it feel joyful? Um, if, you, if it feels joyful, apply these five techniques and you will move forward and it will feel amazing. Um, if you check in and, and these goals don't feel joyful, then it might be time to tweak a little bit. And not that you have to let go of it completely, but maybe we just refocus in a way that is going to be more, more aligned and more fitting to you and to your family, to your life. Um, I have a few other things that I just wanted to touch on briefly. If any of these stands out to you, um, I would love to talk more about it. Again, if you have questions, bring them to me. If you just want to share your story, come share it with me. Um, this is just one free consultation. There's no strings attached. But I would love for you to come join us. You can stop right now. Go find the Facebook page. It's the page. Um, there's a couple groups out there. This one's the page Rising Woman. We post um, every week just a couple different thoughts. Um, and this is not just for mothers. This is for just women at all walks of life. Recently had one about even menopause and a, and, and a different way to look at that different ways to look at our body cycles, different ways to look at our energy, our talents, um, our roles, um, just some positivity in the face of so much negative. So I would love to see you there. Come like that page, follow it. Shoot me an email. Again, if you have any questions, go ahead and book that, that consultation. Let's have a chat. Um, again, it's the email is manwearinghs at gmail.com. Um, and then let's just finish up with a few of these other little tips. Some of these you may have come across. I didn't want to um, spend too long on them, but I feel like it's important to mention them. And there's so much that goes on just in the realm of, of getting things done. In the complexity of life, in the just buffeting of all the things coming at us every day. I get it too. There's constantly dishes. There's constantly drips on the floor and on the cupboards. There's constantly, um, you know, just all these things to, to take care of. Mail. There's constantly mail that needs to be taken care of. So, you know, I have my, my main projects that I'm focused on. There's all these other things coming in that have to be balanced. So if you want to take a deeper look at other techniques that are going to help you with that, I would love to sit down and talk about how to balance all of that. But but my main five are going to go a long way for, for just simplifying, shutting out some of the noise, making your commitment, and then moving forward and getting those things done. Um, don't forget to write down what you've done as well. You'll feel good. So... I'm finally ready for my water break. Quickly, the other tips that we've got. Let go of perfectionism. Sometimes we want it to be just right and that takes a long time and we don't have that time. Just get it done. Set your goal, just get it done. 
um, I think I mentioned, but pick your first step. That's a big one. You'll probably hear that in some of the videos in this summit. So I didn't want to focus on it, but pick your first step. Just do that and then just pick your next step. Make it happen. Let go of perfectionism. I've had to do that again with this class that we're doing um, or my online course, which you're welcome to join in. I'm about to finish this up because I hear my baby now. Um, so just let go of perfectionism. Make it happen. Um, turn off phone notifications. We talked about that. Pick a time to answer messages. And then the rest of the time, you need to be focused on your actual goals. Don't let those little distractions keep you from getting um, the big things done because those little moments add up and they can be powerful if you use them for your big goal. Um, so what's your first step? Go to bed early or, you know, we all have our different rhythms. If you feel you're most productive at night, that's fine. But my point is get enough sleep. Take care of your body. Stay healthy. And we can talk about that as well. I have my course um, online that is just coming out. It's just being released. And we take a look at all the areas of your life. The more balanced you are, um, healing, deep healing, the more that we balance out your life, the more good you're going to feel and the more clarity you'll have on your goals and on accomplishing them. So come take a look at that. This is something that basically just gathers all the different things that, that, um, you know, that I've discovered that have helped millions of other women. This course embodies a lot of those just to get you started. We're going to take a look at, um, you know, some tools that you can look into comparing them. Um, there's some practical techniques that you can apply yourself. I'm big on those. Um, and, and also just holding space for your experience. So just come check that out. It's priced to be something that anyone can have. It's meant to be accessible. That's my goal here as I'm trying to just be more aligned. I'm here to help you. I'm here to help women. I'm really passionate about just rising above um, a lot of the voices out there that tell us the shoulds, like you should do this, you should do that, um, and helping us just embrace that deeper, more peaceful, more aligned way of living. It feels good. So please come check that out. Join our Facebook page um, just for, you know, weekly tidbits that help with that positive mindset and um, and take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. So if, if you want to look at how, how to better do that, we'll talk about that together. Um, serve others. I think I'm going on another list of five right here. Serve others. Making time for others will in the end help you have the time you need for yourself. And, um, and the last thing is actually set bolder goals. So maybe you're not going to be able to put 50 hours into your your new business this week because you're taking care of your family. But can you do more in less time? Set a bolder goal of what you want to accomplish and how you're going to accomplish that. Let go of 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 the usual time frame um, and and just make it happen, right? So we can talk about that as well. Let's have just a routine that feels good and and love this life, love love motherhood, love family, love accomplishing, love feeling fulfilled. That's that's possible and that's here for you and it can happen in a way that that is fully just in sync and beneficial to you and your family. Um, it all can go together. You don't have to have this clash. You don't have to sacrifice one for the other. Um, they can go together. So come chat more with me. I would love to hear your story. Thanks so much for listening. And again, questions, check us out at Rising Woman, the page on Facebook, email manroaringhs at gmail.com. Um, book the call and I'll see you soon. <laughs>